Beginner photographers and those who only plan to try their hand at the craft usually face a serious question. What camera should I start with? There are already countless options and their number grows by the minute. It's actually very easy to blow your budget on support equipment. Just watch this video and you learn what cameras are best suited for beginners and what things you should consider when choosing one. And I will also recommend to you the best value for money cameras I've tried. And don't worry, I've been looking at cameras from different manufacturers and ignore the ongoing Sony vs Canon dispute. Let's get rolling. Let's start with the camera I'm currently using. It is a Canon 650D, also known as Rebel T4i. This model is almost a decade old and it's been in my profession for 8 years. I was using it during my training as a cinematographer. Probably should have upgraded a long time ago, but I still haven't done it because the Canon 650D is really a sturdy device. It will be perfect for newbies who still aren't familiar with uh, fancy terms like uh, exposure, focal length, aperture and so on. This camera has a familiar ergonomics, it lies comfortably in the hand, has an 18 megapixel sensor and a 1.6 crop factor. It has just a few ICC profiles and tones of different modes that I prefer fair not to use, since it barely affect the shot. The biggest limitation of the camera is its ISO sensitivity, and this is an important aspect when choosing a camera. Granted, you can compensate for poor sensitivity with the aperture or with the f-ratio, but just make sure not to crank ISO as high as 400. 800 would be an even bigger mistake. Any shot with ISO over 800 will be riddled with noise and hair. But in case you deliberately want a camera film effect on your shots and noise is almost welcome, then ISO shouldn't be an issue. Besides, you can get rid of the noise in post-production. I usually use PhotoWorks for the job. This photo editor has tons of tools for image enhancement and color correction. Some of the tools are AI powered, which means they are ridiculously easy to apply and control. So if you have decided on the camera, camera, but still need a post-processing tool, then consider PhotoWorks. Especially if you are already in the photography business and need a batch editing feature to process tons of wedding or graduation pics, just know that you can easily do it with PhotoWorks. I've even tell you where to get an awesome discount for the photo editor, find the link in the description. Just remember, if you have a proper photo editor, some camera limitations are not an issue for you. Let's dissect Canon 650D a little further. Shall we? Despite being a camera, it can just as effectively be used as a video recorder. That's what I sometimes use it for. Sadly, don't expect the device to record video in 4K or 2K, but it's fine for 30 FPS Full HD. HD recording is limited by 60 frames. There is no S lock or C lock, but you can pick a great ICC to call or grade your video later. Now to the biggest advantages of the device. Lenses for the this camera are quite affordable. I have a KID 18-55mm lens with a variable 3.5 to 5 aperture and I'm using it right now. But should you order an adapter ring, you'll be able to mount any lens on your camera. There are other Canon triple digit models like 700, 750D, 800D and so on, but I would still recommend a 650D as it is a perfect entry level camera. Some of the more advanced models provide the same quality, give or take, but they are a lot more pricey, which is a bit excessive since the camera menu is really very intuitive. Now we have a more expensive in try, the Sony Alpha 6000. This is a mirrorless camera, which means it is completely silent. It has a hybrid autofocus with uh, 179 phase detection points, 11 frames per second burst shooting mode and full HD video recording with uh, 60 frames per second. While the Canon model is easy to navigate menu-wise, the Sony option is quite confusing. The camera is smaller than the previous option, but uh, this tiny thing uh, still has such a huge menu, it would make the Canon camera red in the face. 
Sony's autofocus is much better than that of the Canon 650D, but Alpha 6000's focus speed greatly depends on the lens you install. This camera's viewfinder is digital, which is divisive. Since I'm a Canon F Shionado, I find it really inconvenient. But you might beg to differ. The most obvious drawback of this option is its battery life. Some seasoned users claim that the device might not even make it through the whole day of extensive shooting. That's why you should always have backup batteries when using Alpha 6000, if you don't want to blow your gig. Another drawback is the absence of a flip screen. This is a crucial issue if you use the device to shoot videos and you have to work both inside and outside the frame. Here's the bottom line. If the Canon 650D is great for beginners, Alpha 6000 is for people who plan to advance into the art. And since we are now talking the 6000 Sony series, I would also recommend Alpha 6300, although it is a pricey option. A used camera wouldn't do that much damage. This more advanced model offers uh, 4K video recording with 120 FPS and Full HD. There's also the S-Log, although some users complain that it gives the skin a greenish tint, but it's all fixable. It also has eye autofocus. This camera model is pro-oriented, so if you choose it as your entry-level tool, you won't need to upgrade for quite some time. I myself considered switching to Alpha 6300, but for certain reasons I'm still stuck with my Canon. And as for treating Alpha 6300 as an entry-level model, just keep in mind that Sony's lenses are more expensive. So if your budget is tight, go with Canon, even though Sony provides better quality. But that's just my opinion. You have an opposing view? Then let me know in the comments. If you plan to use your camera for both photography and videography with a lean towards videography, then the M50 would be a great choice. It has a flip screen, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 4K video recording and whatnot. There is a 24 megapixel image sensor, a fair color accuracy and a digital viewfinder, which is a bit of a bummer, but hey, the camera is mirrorless. Photographers will love its 10 FPS burst shooting. The camera is usually equipped with a 15-45mm lens, which is really nice. Besides, Canon has an immense range of affordable lens options, so buying a new artistic lens to spice up your photography routine shouldn't be a problem. This option also has an awesome autofocus, but its sensitivity is lackluster. I'm not sure if the noise will appear on your YouTube videos, but even 400 ISO widths has a slight noise in them. But if you plan to post-process your pics or footage, you'll be fine. If you are looking for a similarly featured camera, but from a different manufacturer, then I'd recommend the Fujifilm X-A7. It is really similar to the M50, it has a 24 megapixel sensor and 4K video recording. It is even equipped with a 15-45mm lens, albeit the lens and the bayonet mount are from a different manufacturer. The camera has a flip screen, but keep in mind that Fuji's shooting speed is worse than the one in the Canon. The burst shooting mode is limited to 6 frames per second. It's fine, but the previous entry supersedes it by a mile. In terms of ISO, the Fuji option and the M50 are very similar. So I wrote my review of the device in the Fujifilm X-A7 is like a carbon copy of the M50. Well, there is no way we are avoiding talking about Nikon. Most people I know have started with uh, these manufacturers, cameras and are really reluctant to try anything else. I won't recommend that you give the D5100 a try. I've personally never used it, but, but I've heard tons of people speak highly of it. Nikon camera are capable of recording videos, but that is not their strongest feature, but still they give fairly decent results in low light conditions. After all, there is a crop sensor, a 4 FPS burst mode and 
ISO up to 25,600. Keep in mind that if you can crank ISO this high up, it doesn't mean that you should. In terms of ergonomics, Icon D5100 is really similar to Canon. You know, in the days before, the unexpected rise of Sony and Panasonic, Canon and Nikon were the initial two MVPs. Whichever you choose is totally up to you. And finally, here's an ultra-budget friendly solution. As a certified cameraman, I can confidently say this. You should never forget about composition, color balance and lighting. Many beginner photographers make the same mistake. They buy an entry-level Canon camera, shoot with different presets and don't care enough to learn about exposure, composition, etc. So they only trust their guts when pressing the shutter button. If you really want to become a decent photographer, take your grandpa's old film camera and use it. If you have very limited number of frames, you'll understand the importance of premeditation of every shot. Doesn't matter how many frames your film roll feeds, you'll work hard in every one of them and learn the importance of exposure and composition swiftly enough. Well, this tip sure might seem unconventional, but it is arguably the best way to learn how to make great pictures. And once again, it is an insanely cheaper option. You only have to pay for the film. I'll wrap my video up with this. The camera market is growing fast. There are now so many more options than there were a mere 10 years ago when I was choosing my tool. This is what I've learned. There is no such thing as a bad camera, but there are bad photographers. So don't go picking a model for too long. Just take wherever you can, lay your hands on and start shooting. Here's my wisdom for you. My name is Victor. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. This way you'll never miss a cool video and go break a lens so to speak.